What's going on, people of God? Listen, today I want to talk to you about two things, um, two things that, that anger the Lord. And I think that we need to have an open dialogue about this, really in the church, too, because there's a lot of things going on that are visible, that we see. And instead of taking, you know, what the Bible says about it, and, and and calling it what it is, we kind of push it under the carpet or, or we let it ride. And I think that, man, we're coming up on some of these last days. And if we're all really, really striving to be all that Christ wants us to be, all that the Father wants us to be in, in the Beloved, then I think that we need to start holding each other accountable. I think that we need to start telling each other, you know, hey, man, what you're doing is not right. And, and and it's not me that's saying it's not right. I'm, I'm coming to you with Bible. I'm coming to you with verses. I'm coming to you with scripture that lines up. And I'm saying what you're doing doesn't match this. And so what are we going to do about it? And I'm doing it in love. The Bible says speak the truth in love. But we live in a generation where it's, hey, stop judging me. Don't judge me. But again... That's not Bible. The Bible teaches us that if we are of the household of God, if you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then basically what that means is that as your brother in Christ, I can hold you accountable to what this says. And the expectation, my expectation at least, is that you're going to hold me accountable because I'm not perfect. And when I slip, what I, what I truly desire, what I truly need is somebody in the body of Christ to hold me accountable as well and help me so that I can get back on track. And so I think that, like I was saying, one of the areas that we're slipping at in the body is that we're afraid a lot of times to speak truth to each other because we don't want to be, you know, uh, uh, talked about, gossiped about. We don't want people to say that we're judgmental or we think that we're holier than now or so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is the Bible tells us to be holy as he is holy. Right. And so if you're my brother and you know me and we have a relationship and I'm slipping, man, help me so I can get back up in my right mind and begin to walk in a way that pleases God. And I hope that I have enough boldness and enough um, uh, 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 strength in the Holy Spirit to do the same for you. So, like I said, today I want to share with you two things that Jesus hates and I'm going to put it out there and I want comments. I want responses. I want to know what you think because, listen, if we are family, if we're the body of Christ, the word says that everybody is built up by what each joint supplies. And so your voice matters. Your opinion matters. So the first thing I want to talk to you about, right, the first thing that I know for a fact Jesus hates is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is huge. Listen, for me, for many years, um, I refuse to go to church. Now I'm a PK, I'm a preacher's kid, right? So I grew up after a certain after a certain age in the church, um, going Wednesday nights, going Sundays, sometimes two times on Sundays. I got to a point when I became an adult that you know, and I wasn't living the right way. I wasn't living according to what the Bible said. I knew the word to a certain extent, but I certainly wasn't living what the word said. And so because of that, I refused to go into church because I always said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be one of these people in there with my hands in the air, praising, singing songs, smiling at people's faces. No, and as soon as service was over, I was going to go home and smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol or do do all these other different things. So I refused to be a hypocrite. This was my mentality. Now, my mentality was right and wrong in the sense that God accepts you no matter where you are. Come as you are and allow the Holy Spirit to move in you, right? But then there was the right side of it, which was how you live matters. If you profess to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you say that you've been redeemed, you've been sanctified, you've been set free, right? And that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then how you live matters. Jesus has a huge huge problem with hypocrites. We've seen that in the Gospels as we read about his relationship with the 
Pharisees and the scribes. These were the religious leaders of that time. But he said they were whitewashed tombs. He said, you look good on the outside. You was clean on the outside. You was fresh on the outside. How you talked and the things that you did maybe look like it lined up with what God was saying. But he says on the inside, you had dead man bones. He said on the inside, you were stinking because your thoughts were nasty and wrong and evil and impure, right? He said you were hypocrites. There's a verse in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46, and it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say, right? See, this is the problem that we have in Christendom today, that so many people profess Jesus Christ as their Lord. So many people profess Jesus as their Savior, but they do not do what he says, right? So we think that it's okay to read our Bible. And the Bible says, just for an example, that homosexuality, for example, is an abomination before God, that it's sin. But we read the text and we say, well, that was written how many centuries ago and the world has changed and it's evolved and still evolving. And so maybe we need to be more accepting of so on and so forth. But that's not what the text says. That's not what the Bible teaches. So he says, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? The Bible says to bring all your members into submission. Now that you've been freed from sin in Christ Jesus, he says, Paul says in Romans, uh, use your members for righteousness, not for, not for sin, not for unrighteousness. But there's so many, if we're being honest, that claim to have a relationship with Jesus, but you can't tell them apart from the world. They look exactly like the dude next door. They're out partying Saturday night. They're drinking. They're smoking. They're cussing. They're doing all these different things, but they go to church on Sunday morning, so they're a Christian. Well, no, they're not, and that's not what the Bible teaches. They're a hypocrite. They're saying one thing, but living another. And it's time that we address this. It's time that we speak on this. If you have a brother that's not living according to scriptures, be a brother to that brother and have a conversation with him. And bring him back to the word so hopefully the Holy Spirit can bring him to a place of biblical repentance so that he can get back on track before he suffers loss. And by loss, I mean rewards, positions in the kingdom, regality, so on and so forth. These promises that God has given us. Jesus hates hypocrisy. He hates hypocrisy. Let your words match what you're doing, right? Let your, let your words match your actions. And then watch what God does in your life. The second thing that, that, that God hates is, is lukewarm living. He hates lukewarm living, right? In the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 16, it says this. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Right? So let's be honest. There's so many lukewarm Christians in 2022. There's so many Christians that don't know whether they're here or they're, or they're over there. Right? There's a great story. Um, uh, Ezekiel, the prophet, right? Uh, this is during the time of Ahab and Jezebel. And uh, uh, Jezebel had all these prophets of Baal, and they were sacrificing kids, and they were doing all these other different evil and wicked things. And, you know, they were bringing in the children of Israel into this mess. And so uh, Ezekiel called them out one day, and he was like, you know what, bring all the prophets of Baal and meet me on Mount Carmel, I believe it was. And he says, what, what we're going to do is we're going to have... Uh, bull, and you guys are going to call on Baal to see if he'll sacrifice it for you, and I'm going to call on the God of Israel and see if he'll do it, but we're going to do this a little different, we're going to put water around it, so he made it a lot more difficult to sacrifice the bull, and I, I don't have time to go into the full story, but you had these prophets of Baal cutting themselves, screaming, hooting, hollering, doing all this stuff. And Ezekiel's over there laughing at him. He's making fun of him because they look like clowns trying to trying to do all this stuff, right? But when it was his turn, he called on the living God, and the living God, man, showed up and 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 showed out and everyone was blown away. But he said to them, he said, How long are you guys gonna you know, dance between these two, you know, make a decision, 
Either you're for the God of Israel, either you're a Christian, either you're for Jesus Christ, or you want to be a part of the world. But you can't you can't have both. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. You got to make a decision. Now, I'm not talking about perfection. What I'm saying is if you are saved, Jesus said to seek my kingdom above all else. Seek my righteousness. He said in Colossians to set your mind on things above where he is at the right hand of the Father, right? He says that if you are his, you'll abide in him in John 15, right? So it's not that, how do I want to say this? It's not that because Jesus' high priest prayer wasn't that the Father would take us out of the world. He knew that we had to be in the world, but he prayed that we would not be a part of the world, right? You can't be lukewarm. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. So are you hungering and thirsting for him? Are you hungering and thirsting for righteousness, for right living? Are you hungering and thirsting for the kingdom? And because of this hunger and thirst, is it affecting your lifestyle, your behavior, right? Because scripture says that all those who are led by the spirit, these are sons of God. So if you have no evidence of being led by the spirit in your life, then you can't claim to be a son of God. Come on, somebody say amen, because this is just biblical truth. And for so long, we've been just letting so much slide and not saying nothing. And people are playing church and playing Christian, and they don't realize that when Jesus comes back, he's going to say, as he said in Matthew, I never knew you. So if you love your brother, if you love your sister, if you love the people that you have a relationship with, right, that are part of your church, that are part of your family, then you need to be speaking the truth to them. Because there's going to come a time where we all have to stand before Christ at the at the judgment seat and give account, not for our sins, but we're going to give an account for how we lived while we were on earth. And so as we build leaders of Christ's kingdom here on the block, one thing that we need to do is make sure that when we're discipling people, when we're training people, when we're when we're uh, uh, preaching the gospel to people, because we're all called to be ministers of reconciliation, we're letting people know, first and foremost, right, that Jesus died, that you would have life. That's the first step. You're bringing dead men into life through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have redemption in his blood. So we're bringing dead men into life through the power of the Holy Spirit. But once they receive life, it's hold on. Now you have the Holy Spirit inside of you to strengthen you, to mature you, to help you grow and complete you so that you would be a representative of the Most High God by being an image bearer of His Son, Jesus Christ. Not being a hypocrite. What you say out of your mouth matters. When you say that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, what you're saying is, I'm a disciple, I'm a student, and I live my life according to the teachings of my teacher. What you're saying is, I'm not a lukewarm Christian. My heart is on fire. I'm zealous for the things of God the way David was. I'm zealous for my Lord Jesus coming back. I'm sober, I'm, um, I'm mentally alert, and I'm watchful with my eyes to the heavens for his return. But I'm also watchful and mindful of my actions on earth so that when he returns, I'm ready, I'm fit, and I'm prepared. And that's how we build leaders of Christ's kingdom. Listen, this is your man Mel with Mel's Block. Listen, two things Jesus hates is hypocrisy and he hates lukewarm Christianity. He said that he will spew them out of his mouth. How you live matters. Examine yourself and ask yourself, am I living according to what this word says? Not what my pastor says, not what any other man says, but according to what this word says. Y'all be blessed until next time, man. I'm going to holler at you.